To say Turkish football has been dominated by Besiktas, Galatasaray and Fenerbahce is an understatement. In the Super League's official 63-year history, the title has gone to the Istanbul Trio 55 times. Trabzon Sport are an exception to the trend with six titles, but since their last triumph in 1984, the big three have only failed to emerge as winners twice. In fact, only three other sides have ever even finished as high as second. But one glance at the current Super League table and you might think history was mistaken. After 25 rounds of fixtures, the traditional giants are nowhere to be seen. As while Trabzonspor looks set for glory, Fenerbahce and Besiktas are stuck in 6th and 8th, then languishing in the depths of 13th, just 3 points off the relegation spots are Galatasaray. Turkey's most successful ever club with a record haul of 22 league titles and 18 Turkish Cups, Gala are living a nightmare. They have won just once in the league since the start of November and are yet to taste victory at all in 2022. 28 points is their lowest ever return at this stage, while a goal difference of minus 5 is the second lowest in their history. For the first time, the club known locally as Shim Bom face a genuine fight to survive. The legendary Turkish coach Fatih Terim recently left the club for the fourth time, with Pep Guardiola's former assistant Dominic Torrent drafted in to try and restore order. However, a recent 6-2 thrashing at home to second-tier Tuzla Spore was a sickening reminder of the task at hand. But how have Galatasaray plummeted to the worst point in their modern history? This week on Eurofootball Daily Explained, we're heading to the land of four seasons to find out. It wasn't obvious Galatasaray had such a disastrous campaign looming. They won back-to-back -back Super League titles between 2017 and 2019 and placed second last season. Yet the warning bells started ringing in August thanks to an unlikely source in Scotland's St Johnston. Drawn together in the Europa League qualifiers, many assumed Jim Bomb would stroll to victory. After all, they boasted 17 full internationals to St Johnston's two and had an annual wage bill 20 times larger than the Saints. Yet in the first leg, Gala were held to an embarrassing one-all draw in Istanbul. They would beat St Johnston away, though only thanks to a late brace in Perth. One win in five league matches in September then confirmed that a troubled road lay ahead. Fast forward to February and the problems are clear. Their attack has woefully underperformed, with their tally of 30 goals 7.1 less than expected. Yet only Alanya Spore have accumulated better goal-scoring chances than Gala, while their shot conversion rate of 8% is Jim Bomb's lowest since Opta analysis began in 2014. Defensively, they have been even more unfortunate. At the time of writing, they have conceded 35 times, 8.5 more than expected. Like their faltering attack, this is the worst underperformance in the Turkish top flight. But they will take comfort in the fact Fenerbahce and Besiktas are also struggling. Never before have the big three conceded 96 times between them at this stage, while collectively they are just 6 losses away from the record number of 30 defeats in a single campaign. It's also the first time in 46 years that all three have changed managers mid-season. Galatasaray's poor game management is costing them dearly. They have dropped a league-high 21 points from winning positions, yet on average have been ahead more than they have been behind. In a strange twist, they managed to finish top of a Europa League group featuring Lazio, Marseille and Lokomotiv Moscow, but that has done little to alleviate their domestic woes. With results flagging, Terim and now Dominic have desperately tinkered with the side. After 24 games, they had made a staggering 82 changes to their starting lineup and used 34 separate players, once again the most in the Super League. Mustafa Mohamed and Karim Aktakolu are the club's top scorers on just six each, and in desperation, the club turned to former Swansea star Bafatimbi Gomis in January. Gomis did score a massive 29 times in the 2017-18 Super League campaign for Gala. But today the Frenchman is 36 and has spent the last few years playing for Al Hilal in Saudi Arabia. He is one of 14 players to join Galatasaray this season for a net spend of 25.3 million euros. Gomez will head an attack featuring a 32-year-old Sofian Faguli and a 35-year-old Ryan Babel. And this is where another major issue lies. The club has wasted valuable resources on players with minimal resale value and handed out contracts far beyond their means. Babel and Faguli both earn over €67,000 per week, while Radamel Falcao left in the summer with the club unable to meet his €5 million Euro annual salary. For a team of Galatasaray's status, they should know better, but as we will explore, they have a history of veering towards disaster and failing to learn from their mistakes. Back in the year 2000, Galatasaray enjoyed their finest hour when Fatih Terim led them to UEFA Cup glory. 
on a historic night in Copenhagen, a side featuring the prolific forward Hakan Shuka and the legendary Romanian winger Georgia Hadji defeated a star-studded Arsenal team on penalties. It was Turkish football's first ever continental success and Shimbom would go on to beat Real Madrid in the Super Cup. But they were unable to capitalise on their newfound stature. By 2004, financial mismanagement and waste in the transfer market left the club in $150 million worth of debt, the biggest in Turkey. In the words of Semir Gumus, a local sports columnist at the time, a world-class team was created by Fatih Terim, but not a world-class club. The stadium was singled out for criticism. While the famous Ali Sami Yen holds huge sentimental value, by 2003 it could only seat 22,000 and was veering towards disrepair. Inboard squabbling and a botched refurbishment forced them to play the 2003 fall campaign at the Ataturk Olympic Stadium and it would be another eight years before Gala finally moved to the 52,000 seat Nef Stadium. Considering it's estimated the club has 30 million fans in Turkey alone, it's staggering it took so long to develop a ground that could capitalise on demand. The intermittent years were exciting. Drogba, Wesley Schneider and Roberto Mancini all came and went and they reached the 2013 Champions League quarterfinals. But the Turkish Football Federation's cap on foreign players created a bloated market for domestic talent, leaving a buying club like Gala open to exploitation. It's meant by 2017 they were back on the disaster trail. Reuters revealed that Gala had lost 164 million euros over the previous three years, and UEFA slapped them with a one-season European ban for breaches of financial fair play. And to make matters worse, after finishing sixth, they were forced to sell their star striker Burak Yelmaz to Beijing Goan for just 8 million euros. The board were blamed once again, the club's official shop ran at a deficit due to overstaffing and poor strategy, and heavy activity in the transfer market meant that between 2012 and 2017, the club spent a net of over 83 million euros. With nine different club presidents in the 21st century alone, the direction of the club has chopped and changed, and little accountability has been established for the members who abuse the club's finances. And as we will see, a dark future may lie ahead as a result. Besiktas's recent failure to collect a single point in the Champions League group stage demonstrates the continuing decline of Turkey's Big Three in Europe's Premier competition. By UEFA's coefficient ranking, the Super League is now the 20th best division on the continent, down 10 places in four years. Considering around 70-80% to 80 of their revenue comes from international broadcasters, the lack of presence in the Champions League is damning for the entire Turkish game and the financial situation is reaching a crisis point in the Super League. In 2018, a report by German outlet DW found the total debt of Super League clubs was an eye-watering 2.3 billion euros, four times what the division received in annual revenue. For context, the Bundesliga had debts of 1.4 billion euros, although it generated revenue exceeding 3.3 billion. A decline in quality plus the poor performing Turkish lira has only worsened the situation. By September 2021, it was reported that the big three alone were shouldering debt of over 1.5 billion euros. And while Fenerbahce absorbed around 41% of that, Galatasaray are still in the red to the tune of 437 million. In most other leagues, this would spell disaster, but in Turkey, football and politics are never too far apart. According to Tugrul Askar, a prominent local football economist, the Turkish Football Federation often ignore the financial issues facing the big three thanks to pressure from politicians who, quote, see these big clubs as political tools and help prevent them from going bankrupt. As of September 2021, the ruling AK party were drafting a new parliamentary bill that would allow Galatasaray and the remaining big three an opportunity to restructure their debt again, the second such bill since 2019. Among the suggestions that will be presented to President Erdogan include an emphasis on developing better youth structures to produce more talent, reduce their overall reliance on TV income, and a mandate to hold senior executives to account for borrowing that exceeds the club's revenue during their term. Whether or not the new bill can guide the big three towards future prosperity remains to be seen, but for Galatasaray the immediate focus is on just surviving. Relegation from the Super League would be the greatest disaster for a club that is never too far from the brink. Stay afloat and Gala has a chance to learn from the errors of its ways once and for all. But until then, these are nervous times in Istanbul. 
So that was our take on the crisis facing Galatasaray. If you enjoyed this video, please leave it a like. And if you have any suggestions for similar videos on other clubs that otherwise don't get that much coverage on this channel, let us know in the comments. If you haven't already, please subscribe to EFD for more content like this, and we'll see you next time.